Joining us now, Keir Kemp, a singer with the cult band Fearless Vampire Killers, and Colin Freeman from the Sunday Telegraph, who says these kind of assaults are just old-fashioned jobbery. Well, uh, Keir, why don't we just start with what a goth is? I mean, basically, it's not a philosophical condition, it is a visual, it's, it's a presentation. Yeah, right? I mean, you can call it goth, emo, however you, wanted to, however you want to play it. I mean, it's just a way that someone chooses to express themselves. I mean, I'm sure most people don't wake up in the morning and kind of go, I am a goth. Mm. That is me. Like, you know, it's just natural. You take influence from things you enjoy and you express it in certain ways. I mean, you're wearing a suit, so it's the same sort I, of thing. I'm wearing a suit yeah. mainly because, well, <laughs> I, I'd love to dress like that, to be honest, but I'd like to see I don't think I'd well. get away with it. Um, <laughs> but, but quite seriously, have you yourself, do you think, been subject to well, a threat at least. Yeah, absolutely. I mean, luckily for me, I'm in a band that is comprised of a couple of people over six foot. So I haven't seen too much physical abuse. But, you know, I get things said all the time. We've played everywhere from Dagenham to Aberdeen. And when you say said, targeted at Yeah, targeted your directly at us. Well, yeah, just like, you know, just, you know, swearing and just general, like, hate in the street. Um, totally unprovoked. I mean, mm. I'm, I'm just mm. walking along getting a sandwich or something. I, I mean, the murder of Sophie Lancaster, the other hate crimes that have been committed do suggest that they can be victims. Uh, they can be, of course, yes, but um, I would argue that um, when yobs go out on the streets to attack people, um, as they often do in this country, they will look for anything. Um, Sometimes it will be the way somebody dresses, sometimes it will be the colour of their skin, mm. sometimes it will be the fact that they've got ginger hair or that perhaps they look like me and they say, look, here's this, who's this bald git here with the beard? I don't like the look of him with his flowery shirt, you know. Um, we've all been in those situations. But you're not part of any kind of a cult. I'm not, but it doesn't make, mean to say that I, you know, I, I'm, I'm not going to encounter some yob who wants and, to beat and, my and head. And there are laws that protect uh, people of colour, for example, ethnicity, uh, but you're saying there's something different about something as distinct as Kia. Well, I, I think I would say that there are also limited police resources, and if we're going to have specialist legislation um, to allocate extra resources to victims of hate crime, I, I would imagine that most members of ethnic minorities and the other potential beneficiaries of those would say that, that those resources should be allocated to those who have no choice um, when they go out on the streets um, about their appearance. If you've got the black skin or whatever, then you, you can't change it. Um, without okay. wishing to sound harsh, that is perhaps the reality of it. Uh, I, I'm not really up on this whole choice thing myself. I mean, people don't... And obviously, people choose to wear certain things. That's fine, but people don't choose to be defined in a certain way. People don't, you know... Many goths don't label themselves as goths. Other people do. Um, they're simply the victims of their own influence. You know, like they like certain kinds of things. They've got certain kinds of friends. They're, you know, they they present themselves in a certain it, way. But it's is, not premeditated. Is that quite fair? Because it, it, in a way, you do want to be identified as a goth. I mean, you, you wouldn't call yourselves the vampire. Fearless vampire. Fearless killers. vampires. <laughs> if, if, if it weren't for That's your, actually a your film. gothness. That's actually a film. Uh, quite a good film as well. Um, I guess you know. Obviously, you're asking for certain kind of like conclusions to be drawn. Hmm. But as I say, it's the other people that do the categorising, hmm. and people. It's not a choice that someone's made to be to like certain things. You know, someone it, might it, like football. I mean, it, you know. in, a, in a way, I mean, what Manchester is actually talking about, Manchester Police, they're talking about reporting. These, these as hate crimes if they occur. Mm. Surely reporting them is a good thing, then we know how much trouble there is. And there's stigma attached to that. Yes, a lot but... Of it. I, I, to the reporting of it. Like, that's, that's probably the biggest issue. People don't feel that they can come forward, especially in schools and things like that. It's, it's generally played as something that will downplay it. You know, because of the way it's downplayed and viewed culturally, mm. people, you know, don't attach as much importance to it. So. Well, I mean, I, I, I would I abhor any kind of street violence as much as anybody else, and I've been a victim of it on, on occasions, as is everybody else, nothing special. Um, I would say, though, that it, from the point of view, if you're, say, an old pensioner and you get beaten up on the street for no reason at all, do you really want to be going into the police station and being told that your case is not particularly worthy of note compared to something... Uh, that attracts a specialist category of hate crime. I think there is a perception amongst the public 
that this, whether or not it attracts extra resources, that by giving it special attention and categorising it as such, that it is some, somehow more of a priority for the for the police. Well, we will monitor to see what happens in Manchester, but um, thank you very much to you, Colin Freeman, and thank you, Keir Kemp. I'm going thank to you. download something and see what, see what it's like. Yeah, check mm -hmm. it out. Chris. You want to dress like that? I could make that happen. I've still got my <laughs> old bondage trousers and winkle pickers. I'll bring them in and you can try them on.